Hi, this is Robert from Part Fusion Electronics, and today I'm going to talk about an Arduino starter kit that I developed a few years ago as a Maker Faire project. It was a 10 times scale model. So you can see the real size version and the model I created. So I, I used this for my first Maker Faire that I attended as a maker. Before that, I'd only attended as a volunteer. So the design of this was as a kind of an educational tool. Well, actually it turned out to be more of an educational tool. It's a, it's kind of a shield, though it's, it's fully working. The, all the parts are connected through to the Arduino that's sitting in the back. So what I'm gonna do is kind of disassemble this and show you the parts, how I made them and what they're made of. This was made at a time when I didn't have reliable access to a laser cutter or a 3D printer. Um, so all the parts are kind of hand fabricated using drills, files, sandpaper, saws and things like that. Um, as I said, I created this project for my first uh, Make a Fair in New York um, in September 2012. Another person made a kind of a very similar project around the same time, a guy called John Park. He's a writer for Make a Magazine. He's, um, he does a video about, um, uh, does videos for Adafruit. Um, his project was called the Arduino Grande and it was a 5.6 times scale model. And mine, mine here is a, a, a 10 times scale model. Um, I think he showed that in the Bay Area Maker Fair in uh, May 2012. So the basic instruction is um, I took the the, the CAD and um, the, the schematic diagrams and the Gerber files that are open source from the Arduino project um, and produced the a um, an SVG file. I could take the layers of the copper and the silk screen and I, I got this printed out. For, um, I layered these up and brought them into Inkscape, adjusted the colors and then produced this uh, big poster printout that I had created. So the underlying board is MDF. So if I start taking it apart, um, so I have the, I just have the, the, either the parts are stuck down with Velcro or with adhesive putty. Um, so here we have the capacitors. So these are painted blocks to scale of um, MDF. And then, so there's different types of resistor arrays. There it's, it's shaped to look like the, the real thing. And if you look at the regular Arduino, I have to get them a bit closer. You can see all the parts there. Um, I say I want to turn this over in the end. So some of the parts will probably fall off if I turn them over. Um, we have the, this is the five volt voltage regulator. MDF again, spray painted. The, um, the lead wires are, are made with aluminium bent and formed and then glued into place. Um, this is uh, the, the dual op amp. And that's the, um, the crystal. So that's polystyrene and I think some MDF. That's the USB interface, MDF. The headers are blocks of MDF, and then I used copper tubing to make the, the wires. So these are six millimeter copper tubing, and inside the, the headers here, these can be plugged in and out, and the, and the parts will work. I have the, the six millimeter copper tube, and then I have an eight millimeter copper tube, and it just about fits in with a slight friction fit. So it allows me to connect the parts in and out quite reliably. It's the same basic construction on the uh, breadboard there. 
these parts can all be swapped in and out. The breadboard parts, the development kit parts are more um, things that will actually work. Or this is more just like a shield that gives the effect. As I, I did bring through the LEDs on the um, pin 13 and the TX and RX and the power. Um, and so there's, that's the 3 volt, 2.3 volt voltage regulator, MDF and aluminium. You've seen the headers. The switch here doesn't work properly yet, but that's MDF and then I shaped. So uh, making these with a 3D printer or um, laser cutter or even a CNC would be so much uh, simpler. This, I never got the switch to work on the reset button. The DC power jack is a molded polystyrene, spray painted. So I had some trouble with not understanding that the, um, the spray paint would start to kind of dissolve the polystyrene so I had to kind of fill up some of the gaps uh, when I was uh, coloring this in. Then the sorry about all the noise um, so this is the USB connector so my original plan was to bring in a cable through and have it the normal USB B um, connection here working correctly. Um, I have capacitors here, aluminum can capacitor, so this is MDF and this is a spray can lid to make the uh, can shape. Uh, there's another, I remember what that is, I think it's um, a transistor. So this is the last kind of big part. We also have this small crystal here. And then there's a few other capacitors, BTC, positive temperature coefficient devices. That's the, another crystal, or uh, resonator. So the last kind of big part then is the Atmega. So this is polystyrene, the, or the, 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 um, the dip package holder is polystyrene holes, shaped by hand. So the, the Atmega chip then comes out. So that's polystyrene and then aluminium to make the leads. If I was really crazy. You could embed real atmegas and resistors into all these components and wire them into place. But I, it, it kind of works better to be able to disassemble it when you're going to transport it. It's, it's a very big board. Um, it's 21 centimeters by, or 21 inches by uh, I think 27 inches. Let me grab it then. The measuring tape. Yeah, it's a 27 by uh, 21. So when I brought this to the first time to the New York Maker Fair, it didn't actually fit in my suitcase. So what I ended up having to do was saw the board in half. And then when I got to the um, New York, I had to reapply or apply the poster onto the back of it. Um, since then, for the next time I showed it, I showed it also in um, in uh, Newcastle in 2003 and the Dublin Mini Maker Fair, which is now called Dublin Maker, and I showed it also in the Rome the first Rome Maker Fair. Um, so it, it being able to take these parts off meant that it was much more robust to carry in the new suitcase I got, which was the biggest suitcase I could find. Um, make sure to connect. Your 
pin rolling into the right direction on the socket. So now I think I've taken all of the these parts apart. I should be able to flip it over. And we can see the wiring on the back. So I said the board is MDF. There's copper tubing going through. I bring the um, the connections through. Then there's wiring here to an Arduino, a regular Arduino. And I made a custom circuit board with protection diodes, um, TVSs, transient voltage suppression diodes, um, resistors, um, just so because it's a development kit and it would be difficult to, or like a, as, a, as it could be used as an educational tool. If somebody disc, you know, shorted the five volt to the ground rail, you would you would burn out the um, the voltage regulator on the Arduino. So by adding all these protection diodes, make it much more robust for use in a like an educational setting. Let's connect that back in. So it's kind of a shield within a shield. Um, and if you look at the breadboard, or the components on the breadboard, so we've made. Um, jumper wires, so a bit of dowel. And inside that is um, soldered onto the copper tube, uh, I think, um, um, just multi-stranded wire. I also have resistors that can be put in. So that's a 100 ohm resistor, so it's copper tube. The uh, case here is made of uh, plaster of Paris. Here's the inside of one. So it's copper tube soldered onto a bit of PCB and then there's a, a normal resistor on the inside. Encased then in plaster. Um, this is an LDR light dependent resistor. LDR embedded in, this is kind of a hard foam plastic, poster board type plastic, copper tube. I also have a potentiometer. So this is made of the same uh, foam. I think that's plastic, probably from a, I'm not sure what type of plastic, and then we can turn the potentiometer, and if we open it up, there's a construction there, strip board. Clips in to a hole in the bottom. It can be turned around. It's not very strong. It, if, you, if you over twist it, it will just bend the wires out. Um, then I have the LEDs. So these are a piece that I've been kind of, they're quite portable, so I would carry these around. These can be connected up to any sort of voltage source. Um, so a resin cast LED shape and inside that is a, a protection diode and um, my favorite kind of constant current regulator chips. So these, these are very, very robust, very hard, quite heavy copper tubing. So you can, I'm going to make a bit of noise, you, you, know, you can drop these and they should, you know, receive little or no damage. But as they, they can be connected up electrically and you don't really have to worry about somebody burning them out or, or breaking them. Here's a slightly different version where I tried to make it a bit more visible about what's inside. I'll probably do an, a follow-up video on these, the construction techniques, the mold making, um, and, and what I did to, you know, to, to make these and how you could go about making something similar. I used a somewhat similar process to for making the resistors. 
Dann so another one. Then the breadboard is made with the kind of the foam core spray spray painted. And inside that then is an array of the copper the eight mil copper tubing. I'm rubbing off the wire. And then I've used solder wick to kind of make the electrical connection between each of the kind of banks of tubes. I had first made this out of MDF and it was very, very heavy. And because I, I'm living in Ireland, I, I basically have to fly anywhere to take the project down. So I remade it. Um, it's still quite heavy because there's quite a lot of copper in the, in the, in the board. Um, yeah. But it, it, it's like, it's probably two kilos or a bit under two kilos, four pounds. Um, but I think the original one was probably closer to five kilos, like 10 pounds. And that just kind of blew out my um, luggage allowance. So was there anything else? No, I think, I think I've kind of covered everything. As I say, I, I will do a follow up video on the, the LEDs um, and some of the other parts. So if you have any questions, you know, like and subscribe, all that side of the YouTubing. Uh, thank you. Bye.